Visit orthopedicacademy.co.uk to access the Orthopedic Academy's extensive library of FRCS Part 2 interactive case scenarios. Here is a sample of one of the questions that you may be asked on the FRCS Part 2. To access the Orthopedic Academy's extensive library of FRCS Part 2 interactive case scenarios. Here is a sample of one of the questions that you may be asked on the FRCS Part 2. Can you explain the concept of free body diagrams and how they are used to determine static forces and moments in orthopedics? Free body diagrams are a useful tool in orthopedics to visualize the forces acting on a body segment and determine the resultant force and moment about a fulcrum. By isolating the body part and ensuring a state of static equilibrium, we can calculate the forces acting on the body segment. What are the assumptions made when using free body diagrams in orthopedics? There are several assumptions that are made when using free body diagrams, including bones are rigid rods, joints are frictionless hinges, no antagonistic muscle action, weight of body is concentrated through the center of mass, force acts in the direction of the muscle belly, muscles act only in tension, internal forces cancel each other out, joint reaction force, JRF, is presumed to be compressive only, bones are rigid rods, Joints are frictionless hinges. No antagonistic muscle action. Weight of body is concentrated through the center of mass. Force acts in the direction of the muscle belly. Muscles act only in tension. Internal forces cancel each other out. Joint reaction force is presumed to be compressive only. Can you explain the concept of joint reaction force, JRF, and how it is calculated? JRF is the force generated within a joint in response to external forces from muscle contractions and body weight. It is calculated by taking the vector sum of all the forces acting on the joint. In the case of the hip joint, for example, the JRF is equal to the body weight plus the total muscle forces acting on the joint. Can you describe the factors that can influence the JRF at the hip joint and how they can be managed? Several factors can influence the JRF at the hip joint, such as coxivara, valgus osteotomy, and Trendelenburg gait. Coxivara causes an increase in the abductor moment arm, which reduces force of abductors and the joint reaction forces. Valgus osteotomy causes a shortening of the abductor moment arm and therefore increases the force of abductor. Trendelenburg gait involves shifting the patient's body weight to reduce the body weight moment arm. Ways to reduce the hip JRF include losing weight to reduce, holding a walking stick in the contralateral hand, or carrying a weight on the ipsilateral side. How does the knee joint act as a class 3 lever and what is the significance of this in orthopedics? The knee joint acts as a class 3 lever, where the effort is at the tibial tuberosity where the patella tendon inserts. The knee joint itself serves as the pivot, with the femur and tibia acting as either the fixed or mobile component depending on the case. In orthopedics, this is significant because there is an increased JRF with the knee in flex ion due to the increased pull of the quadriceps muscles. Additionally, patellectomy reduces the quadriceps moment arm and increases the quadriceps force. How does the ankle joint act as a class 1 and class 2 lever during the gait cycle and what are the implications of this? The ankle joint acts as a class 1 lever at mid-stance and a class 2 lever at both heel strike and toe off. During the gait cycle, the heel, ankle, and first MTPJ all serve as fulcrums, with the foot typically fixed and the tibia mobile. The ground reaction force is equal and opposite to the force generated by the ankle joint, which is transmitted up the leg. This has implications for conditions such as ankle equinus, which can cause altered forces and moments at the ankle joint and lead to foot deformities. The Orthopedic Academy offers a comprehensive course on FRCS case studies, which includes video case discussions, interactive exercises, and model answers. This course is a great way to prepare for the FRCS exam, and it can also help you to develop your clinical skills. The course is delivered online through the Orthopedic Academy LMS platform, and it is accessible 24-7.
You can learn at your own pace, and you can also interact with other students and tutors in the discussion forum. To learn more about the FRCS Case Studies course, please visit the Orthopedic Academy website www.orthopedicacademy.co.uk